alarm back in 31. Conditions filled him with alarm back in 31. Not a chick chick here or a moo cow there, just broken down farmland everywhere. And Farmer Matt doesn't want to go back to the days when there wasn't a moo or quack. To the days of 1931, when he didn't have bread when the day was done. Farmer Mac knows what to do, election day of 52, gonna go out with everyone in the USA, to vote for Adley Stevenson, to keep his farm this way, with a vote vote here, and a vote vote there, and a vote for Stevenson everywhere, for if it's good for Mac, you see, it's good for you, and it's good for me, all America loves that farm, vote Stevenson today. Adlai Stevenson speaks for a new America and for the education of our young people. Our young people, they are the new America. They deserve an education worthy of the richest nation in the world. But the brutal fact is, they are not getting that education. With our growing population, we need one more classroom and one more teacher every 15 minutes. Today, millions of impressionable young minds are going to school in overcrowded classrooms and even going in shifts. Our teachers are overworked and underpaid, and there is a serious shortage of good teachers. The Republicans have failed to face up to this crisis in education. They have lacked the will and the leadership to meet our children's most pressing need, a need that must be met in a new America. Think it through. Vote for Stevenson and Kefauver, the ticket for you not just a few. Do you want a man for president who's seasoned through and through? But not so doggone seasoned that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. Do you like a man who answers straight? A man who's always fair? We'll measure him against the others and when you compare. You'll cast your vote for Kennedy and the change that's overdue. So it's up to you, it's up to you, it's strictly up to you. Yes, it's Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. Back in July, in San Francisco, the Republicans held a convention. Remember him? He was there. Governor Rockefeller. Before the convention, he said Barry Goldwater's positions can, and I quote, spell disaster for the party and for the country. Or him? Governor Scranton. The day before the convention, he called Goldwaterism a, quote, crazy quilt collection of absurd and dangerous positions. Or this man, Governor Romney. In June, he said Goldwater's nomination would lead to the, quote, suicidal destruction of the Republican Party. So, even if you're a Republican with serious doubts about Barry Goldwater, you're in good company. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. He's so adorable. I wonder what it'll be like when he's older. What's going to happen to him? I hope he won't be afraid the way we are. So much violence now. I wouldn't be so scared if I felt they understood what it's all about and they cared. Hubert Humphrey has said that every American has the right to a decent and safe neighborhood. And on this, there can be no compromise. But for every jail that Mr. Nixon would build, Mr. Humphrey would also build a house. For every policeman Mr. Wallace would hire, Mr. Humphrey would also hire a good teacher.
My nephew was killed over in Vietnam about two years ago. We're going to go to Russia now and de help develop their country. And the Chinese, they want Nixon to stay in power here yet. Why? Personally, I think it was a good thing the president went to Peking. Right. I think it's a good thing we're trying to improve our relations with Russia. But why do we say that 15 million people in North Vietnam are a greater threat to the United States because they're communists than 800 million people in China or 300 million in Russia. This is the thing that doesn't make sense. I voted for, I voted for Nixon in the 60s. I never voted for a Republican before until he come along and says he's going to stop this war, which he didn't. Well, do you know who you're going to vote for this year? George McGovern! McGovern, Democrat, for the people. The people are paying for this campaign with their hard-earned dollars. Send what you can to McGovern for President, Washington, D.C. Hi, Governor Carter from Georgia. Sure. Running for President. I want to ask you to help me next year. In the beginning, Jimmy Carter's campaign was a lonely one. But through the months, more and more people recognized him as a new leader. A man who will change the way this country is run. A competent man who can make our government open and efficient, but above all, an understanding man, who can make ours a government of the people once again. Jimmy Carter, a leader for a change. Each day, the world's most important information flows into the Oval Office. And when the Chief of State travels out into the world as our principal representative, he must carry at his fingertips a vast fund of ever-changing information about nations, relations, and people. This will be the fourth economic summit conference, and I approach it with optimism. Whether at an economic summit or at the funeral of a Japanese prime minister, President Carter represents this nation with intelligence and dignity. He has built an enduring relationship with the People's Republic of China, and he has established working friendship with a range of world leaders. Like many Americans, they have come to respect the dedication, the humanity, and the good sense of President Jimmy Carter. 1982. Reaganomics sinks our country into the deepest recession and unemployment in 50 years. Now Ronald Reagan says the economy is moving up. It is, up on a mountain of debt and record Reagan deficits, more borrowing than all the other presidents in history combined. That'll drive interest rates up, slow the economy down, and then, if you're thinking of voting for Ronald Reagan in 1984, think of what'll happen in 1985. You want more for your kids than you had. And that's the American dream. Mondale and Ferraro bringing a new fairness to America. While Mr. Reagan tries to slash Medicare, they fight for seniors. While he forces four million people out of work, they fight for workers and on tax breaks. I refuse to make your family pay more so that millionaires can pay less. They'll be taking the first step in a new direction for America. Mondale Ferraro, for your future. where American goods and American workmanship are the best in the world. That's what this election is all about. He turned around a 10-year economic slide and created a boom that has made Massachusetts one of the hottest economies in the country. He brought people together, created over 400,000 jobs, and pushed personal income to the highest levels in the nation. He erased a massive deficit, balanced 10 budgets in a row, and cut taxes five times. It wasn't a miracle. It was leadership. By working together to create opportunity and a good life for all, all of us are enriched, not just in economic terms, but as citizens and as human beings. For a new era of economic greatness in America, Michael Dukakis for president. I was born in a little town called Hope, Arkansas, three months after my father died. I remember that old two-story house where I lived with my grandparents. They had very limited incomes. It was in 1963 that I went to Washington and met President Kennedy. 
at the Boys Nation program. And I remember just uh, thinking what an incredible country this was, that somebody like me, you know, had no money or anything, would be given the opportunity to meet the president. That's when I decided that I could really do public service because I cared so much about people. I worked my way through law school with part-time jobs, anything I could find. And after I graduated, I really didn't care about making a lot of money. I just wanted to go home and see if I could make a difference. We've worked hard in education and health care to create jobs, and we've made real progress. Now it's exhilarating to me to think that as president, I could help to change all our people's lives for the better and bring hope back to the American dream. The facts Bob Dole ignores in his negative attacks. The deficit cut 60%, 10 million new jobs, family income up 1,600, health insurance you don't lose when changing jobs. President Clinton moving our economy ahead, helping families. Now a plan to cut taxes for college tuition, $500 per child tax credit, break up violent gangs, move one million from welfare to work. Dole resorts to desperate negative attacks. President Clinton is protecting our values. 1969, America in turmoil. Al Gore graduates college. His father, a U.S. Senator, opposes the Vietnam War. Al Gore has his doubts, but enlists in the Army. When he comes home from Vietnam, the last thing he thinks he'll ever do is enter politics. He starts a family with Tipper, becomes an investigative reporter. Then Al Gore decided that to change what was wrong in America, he had to fight for what was right. He ran for Congress, held some of the first hearings on cleaning up toxic waste, made the environment his cause, broke with his own party to support the Gulf War, fought to reform welfare with work requirements and time limits. His fight now is to ensure that prosperity enriches all our families, not just the few. Strengthen Social Security, take on big drug companies to guarantee prescription drugs for seniors, hold schools accountable for results, tax cuts for working families and the middle class. Al Gore, married 30 years, father of four, fighting for us. I was born in Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in Colorado. My dad was serving in the Army Air Corps. Both of my parents taught me about public service. I enlisted because I believed in service to country. I thought it was important if you had a lot of privileges as I had had to go to a great university like Yale to give something back to your country. The decisions that he made saved our lives. When he pulled me out of the river, he risked his life to save mine. For more than 30 years, John Kerry has served America. If you look at my father's time in service to this country, whether it's as a veteran, prosecutor, or senator, he has shown an ability to fight for things that matter. John is the face of someone who's hopeful, who's generous of spirit and of heart. We're a country of optimists. We're the can-do people. And we just need to believe in ourselves again. A lifetime of service and strength. John Kerry for president. I'm John Kerry, and I approve this message. I'm Barack Obama. America is a country of strong families and strong values. My life's been blessed by both. I was raised by a single mom and my grandparents. We didn't have much money, but they taught me values straight from the Kansas heartland where they grew up. Accountability and self-reliance. Love of country. Working hard without making excuses. Treating your neighbor as you'd like to be treated. It's what guided me as I worked my way up, taking jobs and loans to make it through college. It's what led me to pass up Wall Street jobs and go to Chicago instead, helping neighborhoods devastated when steel plants closed. That's why I passed laws to moving people from welfare to work, cut taxes for working families, extended health care for wounded troops who'd been neglected. I approve this message because I'll never forget those values. And if I have the honor of taking the oath of office as president, it will be with a deep and abiding faith in the country I love. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Bernie Madoff, Ken Lay, Dennis Kozlowski, criminals, gluttons of greed, and the evil genius who towered over them? One man has the guts to speak his name. Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. It's me, Big Bird. Big, yellow, a menace to our economy. Mitt Romney knows it's not Wall Street you have to worry about. It's Sesame Street. I I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. Mitt Romney taking on our enemies no matter where they nest. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. 
I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? You gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. A person who's flat-chested is very hard to be a 10. Our military is a disaster. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing drugs, they're rapists. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Get him out of here. Putting a wife to work is a very dangerous thing. Wouldn't you rather, in a certain sense, have Japan have nuclear weapons? And Saudi Arabia have nuclear weapons? weapons? Saudi Arabia, absolutely. Talk of maybe using nuclear weapons. Nobody wants to hear that well, about then, an American then president. why are we making them? Why do we make them? I would bomb the shit out of them. I love war in a certain way. In 2004, my son was stationed in Iraq. He saw a suicide bomber approaching his camp. My son moved forward to stop the bomber when the bomb exploded. He saved everyone in his unit. Only one American soldier died. My son was Captain Himayun Khan. He was 27 years old, and he was a Muslim American. I want to ask Mr. Trump, would my son have a place in your America? I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. Scranton is a long way from Wall Street. You won't find skyscrapers or big city bankers. Just hardworking people that make this country work. That's where Joe Biden's story starts. In working class neighborhoods where you could make a good living and pass on a better life to your kids. That's why Joe Biden went into public service to begin with. To make a difference for working families. Donald Trump, he ran for president for himself and for his friends on Wall Street. For Donald Trump, it's about those at the top. For Joe Biden, it's about the backbone of this nation, working families. This crisis has revealed that we must do more for workers and small businesses, not the wealthy. And Joe Biden is the one to do it, to build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. <laughs> 